Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Okay, guys. Let us learn about bread. How the U.S. ruined bread. Preemptive like, original link to the video, top of the description. I love bread. There is so much good bread in France. And although man doth not live by bread alone, without it the meal seems incomplete. On every corner, there is a bakery that is pumping out delicious, fresh, well-made bread. It's so fresh. This is not easily available to me, and I want to know why. Why is it that the bread that I can get easily looks very, very different? Why is it that the U.S. sucks at making bread? I think one of the... Re In fact, let me just show you what that looks like. Okay, wait, it's 12 hours earlier, uh, still back in the U.S. I'm, I'm actually at a grocery store right now. This is how a lot of us Americans get our bread. Well, usually in a grocery store, there's a bakery section and you can get better bread. But I think the sliced bread was just for like... PB and J's and and uh, sigh. My favorite part is when they make this plastic look like it's steaming. It's just like foggy plastic to be like, this was just baked right Fresh. now, and it's like, no, this was actually baked like three weeks ago in a factory in like Connecticut. It's even made with real butter. <laughs> in a factory. Whenever something has to say it's made with real butter, in, like Connecticut. Uh, not really, but you get it, lol. I don't actually know where the bread is made. It's even made with real butter. <laughs> Always buy Wonder Bread. You'll be glad you did. The reason I'm purchasing this bread is because I want to bring it with me to, to France. Just to, like, have an example lesson. And I may use it as a pillow because it's literally as soft as a Nova Foam pillow. Some of this bag bread Gary. is made with ingredients that are literally illegal in the EU. Back to France, let's do it. There's nothing more American than Wonder Bread. I'm going to France. So you guys don't have like any sliced bread like that? How In you? case you're wondering, yes. Any video from Paris must include music like this. Nice, gentle cafe accordion music. There's my composer Tom making it right now. It's pretty cool. It's just so good. Okay, so yeah, we know that France is good at bread and the US sucks at it. Is this just another video where I shit on the USA for being terrible at certain things? It's fine. Yes, it is. It's exactly what it is. But hear me out. I actually have something to say here. I believe that bread is a really important symbol for a bigger cultural phenomenon in the US. And that's what I want to talk about today. Where industrialized bread came from, why it exists, and how some people are trying to change it. I'll get to that explanation, but first I'm gonna go into that bakery over there and buy myself a large ball of butter and flour stuffed with chocolate. Oh, and Tom, can you throw in a beat to this accordion music, please? A chocolate croissant? Yeah. Thanks. Any questions? Um, yes. Are you going to finish that croissant? Croissant? Oh, yeah. Pause. My job is to make videos for you. And the reason I'm able to do that is because there are... Ad time. Guys, make sure to use the slash Johnny Harris for the betterhelp.com are brands that support this channel. This video in particular is sponsored by BetterHelp, and I'm grateful for that because I deeply support what they're trying to do. BetterHelp is online virtual therapy. I've been going to therapy for several years. It has changed my life, but I'm very aware that it's not easy to find a therapist the traditional way. With BetterHelp, I've gotten therapy too. Very helpful. I don't want to put down therapists. Obviously, they're good, but sometimes it just helps to just talk about your everything that's in your mind to someone who's not allowed to tell other people. So they, it really is a really big help if, if you have mental health issues and you haven't gotten a therapist, gone to one. I highly recommend it. Just give it a try and be as honest as possible. 
Technology helps fix some of this. You fill out a survey and then BetterHelp assesses your needs and it matches you with someone in their massive network of over 20,000 licensed therapists. And then you start communicating with them like in as little as 48 hours. You can do a video call, you can do just a phone call, or you could even just do a live text. If your therapist isn't a good fit, you can easily change for free. And it eventually helps you find the right fit. Therapy is a way to improve your mental health, something that is there privacy issues when it comes to texting therapists? We all need. This is why over 2 million people are on BetterHelp. But this is, this, this is the greatest ad I've ever seen in all of my ad watching. This is an amazing thing, and I'm, I'm glad it's, a thing. It's, some, it's happening. Your mental health, something that we all need. This is why over 2 million people are on BetterHelp. This isn't a self-help thing. This isn't like a crisis line. It is legitimate, real therapy done securely on the internet. If you want to try this out at a discount, you can. There's a link in my description. It's betterhelp.com slash Johnny Harris. Clicking that link helps support this channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp. Therapy has changed my life. It could change yours. Go check out BetterHelp and thank you BetterHelp for supporting this channel and the journalism that I do. Let's dive back into the video. Okay, so why bread? There's a million other things I could talk about that are better in other parts of the world, but it turns out that bread is the most important prepared food that humans have ever made and therefore it is worth talking about. Rice so let me explain in under a minute the overview of the tens of thousands of years of history of bread and its chemistry and why it's so important. Don't think I can do it in under a minute? Check this out. 12,000 years ago, humans realized that they could plant this grass instead of just foraging for it. This grass was called wheat, and when it was ground up with a stone, it made this powder that, if you put water with it, creates this stretchy, goopy thing that has a bunch of sugar from the flour that's been released. Oh look, wow. all the bacteria in the air love this sugary goop, nice. and they descend to feast on it, burping out gas as they eat. Whoa, the gas can't float up into the air because it's getting trapped in this stretchy ball of goop, like a balloon, like a pillow, like magic. Magic. All this feasting and burping is making it rise and turn into a pillowy thing that is way bigger than it was. Put this blob next to some fire and all of the little bubbles that were just created turn hard. Wait, all of this can happen because of this one grass? Yes. Cool, let's plant a lot more of this grass and build all of human civilization off of it, said humans. So that is bread, said humans. Credit Bill Wirtz, I love you and your work. So that is bread, like the oldest and most important prepared food item that humans have ever invented. Eventually humans got really good at doing this bread, flour, water, yeast thing. And especially here in France, they took it really seriously and have created a whole culture around making bread delicious and amazing. And you can see that they've continued that culture today just by the number of bakeries that exist in this city. There are 30,000 independent bakeries in France. Compare that to the 3,000 that are in the United States. And then remember that the US has like a much larger population. And if you do all the math, you see that France has 50 times yep. more bakeries per capita than the United States, 50 times. I mean, that is such a clear indication of how much they value good bread. I feel like uh, France has a lot of laws that like prohibit too much um, mass pro processing and and when it comes to like cheese and their wine and and uh, bread, it's a very important thing to the culture and they like nice things. And so they they want to make sure that stays. And that's definitely not what the U.S. does. That is baked a certain way. You're here with Mr. Local over here. Yeah. <laughs> Local French food in France. Yes. 94% of Parisians live less than five minutes away from a bakery. And well, that's that a... shows you they care. They yeah. care. It's like you, you, you hear stuff like that and you're like, aha, uh -huh, uh, th this is their priority. Yeah, yeah. And the culture of, of eating is just as much important here as how like the ingredients are sourced and prepared and whatnot. Yeah. People don't eat while rushing towards their next meeting or whatever. Like it's very much, no, you sit down, you make it a thing. It's just a part of the way of life here. Yeah. People come into the boulangeries almost on a daily basis and they check in with each other. It's like, uh, hey, how you doing? You know, I'm doing great. This is what's happening. Why, 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 why? That is the question. Why are these bread cultures so different? And the answer, 
comes down to what America was founded on. I mean, a reminder that America is a country founded by a bunch of people who left their country to go make a new life, to do things differently, to do things more individualistically. And the way that expressed itself for a really long time was mechanization, industrialization. And to be clear in the history, Britain was as much to blame for all of this mechanizing of bread as America was. That's insulting! But anyway, we're talking about the USA for a little bit. So by the 1920s, you had this machine that was invented, an automatic bread slicer. Hello convenience, innovation, America. Yeah. No more serrated knife versus a tough, crusty loaf. Now the machine will do it for you. This is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Oh, so that's where we're at. This is the greatest thing says America. And Europe was like, wait, yeah, we like machines too, but like not for bread. Slice this bread and you make your bread spoil faster. We don't need a machine for sliced bread. But the preservatives. And how do you make sandwiches? No. Automatic slicer was just the beginning for America. No, I'm just getting warmed up. Now that we have sliced bread that, yes, spoils faster, let's make it, I don't know, not spoil as fast. Right, it's like not spoil faster, and what does it need? It needs to be soft, uh, inexpensive. It needs to be tough enough to spread peanut butter and stuff on it, and the perfect Frankenstein consumer mass bread thing. One way to do this is to take the part of the wheat berry that has oils in it, the husk and the bran, and get rid of it. Focus on the big carb-loaded berry in the middle but there had to be a more industrial solution to make the bread last longer, to be whiter, to be softer. And it's the 1950s and Europe is like, whoa, dude, America, chill out. Like bread is just bread. We've been doing this for literally tens of thousands of years. Let's just like stick to the program. And America's like, no. So America starts adding all of this stuff to their bread, bleaches and dough conditioners. And suddenly they're putting their bread into controlled chambers so that it will be hot enough to rise faster. And and they're putting preservatives in so that their bread can now sit on a shelf for not just one or two days like it should, but four days, five days, six days, a whole week, and it's still soft. It is still white. It is still spongy and delicious. But it now has 15 ingredients instead of three. And it's cheap and convenient and stable, and America is loving this, and Europe is like, whoa. You took this way too far. This is not bread anymore. And indeed, I would argue that this is not bread anymore. It's a bread-like substance. It's a different product made from a different process. And yet it is something where bread is just an ingredient. That we use the same word inside for it. of it. If you want to know more about what's inside of this kind of bread, I was actually here making this video when I stumbled upon a video from one of my favorite YouTubers, Adam Ragusea, that's like a deep dive into all of the ingredients in this kind of industrial bread. Definitely go check it out. Some bread in the US has taken it so far that they will put in additives that keep it spongy and soft or that keep it really white, even though these additives are known to like cause cancer and inflame asthma and <laughs> do all- Yeah, but money. Um, what was I gonna say? Known to like soft or that like keep it really white, even though like I was watching the American versus British McDonald's and it's like the fries look a little different. Oh, that's because they add a coloring thing to the McDonald's to the American McDonald's fries to make it. It's all about like screw the health, just make it look tastiest because that'll sell. And if they get cancer, that's that's their problem. Though these additives are known to like cause cancer and 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 like to them they'll always have the thing well we clearly put these things ingredients here you can look it up see that it causes cancer but are most people gonna do that no inflame asthma and do all of these terrible things many of these additives that are legal to be put in american bread are literally illegal in europe and many other i countries. wonder if cancer rates in the u.s are higher than in europe Azodicarbonamide is one of them. This is a whitening agent. But you know what? This product, ADA, also helps other things stay softer, like 
yoga mats. ADA is in yoga mats to make them spongy and soft, and it is banned in the EU and many other countries. Our obsession with convenience, cheapness, softness, shelf life has led us down a really dangerous path, and yet we're totally okay with it somehow. This is why I think bread is a useful symbol for broader American culture. It shows us how far we are willing to go to prioritize things like cheapness and convenience over tried and true methods of, that have been baked into culture. Just to say, one well, guys, if you, it, don't don't like think that you can't get baguettes pretty much anywhere. You you can. It's just that there are a lot of options of this kind of stuff. Like I I prefer a more standard baguette too. Culture and true methods of, that have been baked into culture. Of course, industrialized bread exists here as well. It doesn't have some of the carcinogenic ingredients that are not allowed in the EU, but Why not? it still has all of the dough conditioners, bleaches, still artificially risen, all of that. The difference Why is am that I it is rare. This it is much me. more rare here. What is much more common is the ability to go to your local bakery and get bread that only has a few ingredients. And it's the ingredients that humans have been using for tens of thousands of years to make this staple food. The feeling that I generally have is that this is how it should be. And then when I go elsewhere and you have other kinds of bread that, that last kind of bizarre amounts of time, you know, you're like, this is not really how it should be. You get calories. What the heck? When? What? When have you ever seen the wine aisle and the bread aisle in the same aisle? That blows my mind. Celebrated to kind of this new standard here, mm -hmm. and it's it's it kind of ruins you. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out Paris is low key one of the most bikeable cities I've ever been in, but it used to not be like that. Like last time I was here, it was not this bikeable. I smell some urban design policy changes at a foot here. Someone tried to change this in the U.S. a few years ago, a company called Panera. What could be better than a visit to Panera Bread? Tried to. Broccoli cheddar soup, baguette, small Caesar salad, amazing meal from Panera. Bring like European bread culture to the United States. And they did. They had high quality, delicious bread. But what happens next is p potentially the best metaphor for America. Hello. I like money. They got a business loan so they could expand. And then they got investors and they started to expand and scale. And then they were purchased in a massive merger. And now they're planning to go public on the public stock exchanges. Like they just became a massive corporation who does not focus on making quality artisan bread. Instead, they're now just a machine pumping out bread that kind of looks and feels like European bread, but is now done in a uniform, mass produced, industrialized process all in the name of that's the thing there are a lot of laws in place in france that make it so you won't go out of business because there are laws you know protecting bakeries but in the u.s it's like all right you can make these great artisan bread stuff but it's going to be twice as expensive and less convenient and you're going to go out of business and it's like okay so i have to go to the Process routes, I think. Scale and profit. <gasps> wow, they have it. Canned bread. So the question is, why does this matter? Like, am I just being a snob who's like... Canned bread. So the question is, why does this matter? Like, am I just being a snob who's like, traditional bread is better and therefore everyone should have it and I hate America. That was snobby. You're a snob. Uh, no. I'm not. Kind of, yeah. But also, it actually makes a difference in how it goes into your body. The beauty of bread always was that you could put this goop out in the air and bacteria would come down and start to feast on it and kind of start the digestion process. That is what natural fermentation does, is it starts to break down the wheat and make it ready to go into your body. The way that we make bread in America doesn't really leave time for this. We use heat and chemicals to speed this process up, to make it rise faster, to make it rise bigger in an artificial, synthetic way. And so you're actually getting a much inferior product to what original bread making. So what you gotta do, the only thing you can do, 
is get the same laws in the U.S., which I feel like the laws are there in France because it's so ingrained in French culture and they're less about uh, mass production and they're more about quality. And in the U.S., in order to get this bread you want, you'd have to do the same thing, which is impossible. You'd have to say, no, we want nice things and protect, you know, companies from making too much bread that isn't, you know, it, in the U.S., it just had a looks like and what it produces. Yes, it lasts longer. Yes, it tastes like chewy, pillowy, sugary heaven, but it's not bread the way that humans have been eating it for tens of thousands of years. Convenience, scale, independence, that is what we love in America. We Brother. love shelf life. We love industrialized efficiency. And to me, yeah, all that stuff is super great because it means we get to live these wonderful, prosperous, convenient lives. But I think we lose something really big when we focus on those as the priorities as opposed to quality and community and culture. Last thing I'll say here is that this American is slowly culture. changing. You have a movement in the U.S of people making some of the best bread in the world using the most traditional methods and ingredients. Yeah, I've seen this in other uh, Food Insider videos where they're like, uh, like they're, whether it's in like Uzbekistan or, or, or Greece and they're like the last shop in their town and there used to be like 30, like 60 years ago um, because, but they all started mass producing. But there's always going to be a niche or there, people are, there's always going to be a market for quality, well done, how it was made always in the past. You know, there's always going to be a market for that. Just on a mass scale where everyone's doing that, that it's not going to happen. In these big cities, you have amazing bakeries doing bread that is on par with anything you could get in Europe. And that kind of blows my mind. The problem is, and my critique, is that... That is still so rare and specialty and really only available to people who live in big urban areas. And meanwhile, the rest of us, the most accessible bread to us is this industrial, mass-produced garbage. Mercury. Belongs in the trash! And that is enough to make me pretty frustrated. Yeah, I, I you know... The smaller picture of just the bread is less important, but the bigger picture overall is, is, is a good point. How America prefers productivity over quality and quantity over quality and shelf life over quality. Anything over quality. Money over quality. There you go. Cool video. Awesome channel. Johnny Harris. See you guys next time. Bye.